Teresa and the Lost Demon. Long ago, there existed two clans, the Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbra Witches of Darkness. Together they controlled a mysterious power. The clans put in place strict laws to ensure that strife would never consume them. But a pair of star-crossed lovers broke this rule and a child was born with the blood of both sage and witch. It was a beautiful baby girl. As punishment for their forbidden love, the pair were torn asunder. The girl's sage father was exiled to a far land and her mother locked away in a solitary jail. The witch clan took in the young girl, but she grew up shunned as a pariah, cursed by the circumstance of her birth. Her one comfort was the night she snuck into the village jail to visit her mother's cell. Her mother passed each grueling day barely able to so much as move in her cold cell. But when her daughter came to visit, the witch always showed her a loving smile. But even this small happiness eventually came to an end. On the night of the girl's 10th birthday, her mother was to be moved to a deeper cell, where even the faintest memory of daylight could not reach her. In desperation, the girl tried a daring rescue, but with only a child's strength, the attempt was in vain. More alone than ever before, the young girl clung to all she had left, a stuffed cat named Cheshire, which her mother had made for her long ago. Many moons have since passed. Turning her back on the village, the girl was taken in by an exiled witch who lived on the outskirts of town. Under her strict guidance, the girl continued to train in the ways of the dark arts. She was determined to be a powerful witch and one day save her mother. Her name was Ceresa. Ha <laughs> 
You're almost out of time. This is your last chance. If you don't hurry, you may never see your mother again. John... I... I can't... Ugh, oh, you big baby. Come on, I'll lead the way. You hurry on ahead. Wait! John! I can't do this alone!
that dream again. But the ending... It was a dream Ceresa knew by heart. But this time, something had changed. Ceresa decided to consult her friend Cheshire. A strange boy appeared and told me something incredible. He said, if I went to Avalon Forest, he'd give me a fantastic power. If we had that, rescuing Mummy would be a piece of cake. The Forbidden Forest. The oft-repeated warning from Ceresa's teacher rung in her ears. Avalon Forest is home to fairies, creatures who love to whisk away children. Stay away. Ceresa, <gasps> where are you, my dear? Ceresa's teacher Morgana was standing by the door, her frown discernible even from a distance. Chores neglected, and I find my apprentice enjoying her beauty sleep. I'm sorry. Uh, I just closed my eyes for a second. I, I was, I... Uh... Ceresa began making an excuse, but Morgana's scowl stopped her in her tracks. Yes, ma'am. I'll get to them right away. But despite her best intentions, Ceresa's gaze drifted back towards Avalon Forest. This did not go unnoticed by Morgana. Oh, if I've told you once, Ceresa, you must never enter that forest. With your current abilities, you would soon become a snack for one of the fairies who live there. Yes, Morgana, I know. Well then, stop your dreaming and finish those chores before moonrise, young lady. All right. Water from the well, coming right up. A simple yes will suffice, Ceresa. Off you go. Despite her strict exterior, Ceresa had grown attached to her teacher. Morgana had also been cast out of the village. She understood Ceresa's pain, and her stern treatment came from a place of love. Ceresa often reminded herself that these chores were all part of her training. Eager to please her master, she hurried off towards the well. Fetching a pail of water, it may seem like a simple chore, but it requires a fine sense of control, making it perfect for umbran training.
After laying eyes on the full bucket, Morgana gave a small nod of approval. Good. Now collect the herbs from the garden. Oh. oh. At the thought of herbs, Ceresa could not help but make a face. This is one job she wished could be forever stricken from her regimen. Do we have a problem? No, ma'am. Trying not to think about the task awaiting her, Ceresa headed towards the herb garden. The herbs in Morgana's garden were not your common basil or thyme. She grew infernal plants with an absolutely foul stench. They typically burrowed to avoid sunlight, but a little bit of magic made them pop right up. Ceresa was pleasantly surprised. She usually managed to make a mess with even this rudimentary magic. I can't wait to see the look on Morgana's face. <laughs> Ceresa hummed a happy tune while picking the herbs. As she bent down, she noticed a pretty flower growing amongst the weeds. Oh, those flowers would really bring out the colour in Morgana's eyes. <clears throat> oh, I wouldn't mind if it weren't for the smell. Teresa proudly gave the basket to Morgana. It was full to bursting. How about that, Morgana? Quite the harvest, wouldn't you say? I also picked these violets. They're for you. I thought you might like them. Atop the herbs lay a small wreath. Morgana glanced down at it. Her expression unchanged. She spoke to Teresa in her usual tone. Do not expect praise for this sort of perfunctory performance. Oh, and Ceresa, your hair today seems to have lost its sheen. Do not tell me that in addition to your outdoor tasks, you're also neglecting your hair. Uh, no, ma'am. It's next on my list. Uh, remember, Ceresa, hair is the most versatile tool of an Umbra witch. It can be shaped into our armor, weapons, and even used as a medium for summoning infernal demons. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. 
Care for it as you would your most precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Understood. I'll make sure to finish up before training starts tonight. Good. Now get back to your chores. The shadows grew long. The moon will soon rise. With this, Morgana turned and walked back towards the house. Yes, ma'am. At times, Morgana's cold treatment got Ceresa down. But she knew that Morgana cared for her and only wanted what was best for her. <laughs> Making a quick recovery, Ceresa resolved to finish her remaining chores in record time. Almost time for today's training. I'd better hurry, or I'm in for another lecture. With the household chores complete, it was time for Ceresa's daily training in the dark arts. Today, she was finally going to get a chance to attempt a spell she had been practicing for weeks, summoning an infernal demon. For today's training, I will give you a little help. Before even learning what it did, Ceresa was captivated by the intricate brace. This is a tool for those who have yet to master the flow of magic. Furthermore, we train under the full moon of the bisextile night, when the dark energy we Umbra harness is at its zenith. <clears throat> Are you listening, young lady? You seem determined today. Perhaps I should let you nap more often. Yes, ma'am. Ceresa's spirits were high. She was determined to succeed. Bataiva Tozu! Step by step, Ceresa <laughs> flawlessly performed the summoning dance. Until... This looked like trouble. <laughs> Unless bound by hair, there would be no way to control the demon. <laughs> the demon turned to ash mere inches from Ceresa. Without a proper medium, demons will soon die in our world. Ah. Uh. We are finished for today. L let me try again, please. Morgana turned and walked away, ignoring her pupil's desperate plea. What kind of witch fears her own summoned familiar? I was foolish to think you were ready for this training. Morgana told Ceresa to put away the magic brace before heading back to the house. Long after Morgana was gone, Ceresa sat moping in the garden. Out of habit, she shared her troubles with Cheshire. Forget returning to the village and saving Mummy. At this rate, I'll never even become a witch. All of a sudden, the words from the boy in her dream echoed in her ears. Teresa, give you the power to save Mother. Avalon Forest, the white wolf, guide you. Avalon Forest? 
Ceresa's eyes wandered back to the forest. Morgana's repeated warnings left little room for ambiguity. And yet... Morgana is always dangerous this and stay away that. How could a dank old forest be that scary a place anyway? Adults do often exaggerate to keep kids in their place. This thought got Ceresa's blood boiling. Grievances started bubbling up. Nothing I do is ever good enough for her. Did you see those herbs? Flawless! As she blew off steam to Cheshire, she noticed Morgana's brace shining in the moonlight. What, oh, what are you saying, Cheshire? Take the brace and sneak into the forest? Morgana would give us a right smack on the bottom. Although, with the moon shining brightly, it was the ideal chance for a little surreptitious forest excursion. I mean, if I just had another chance to get the hang of it, I could have gotten that demon totally under wraps. With a demon by her side, eviscerating a fairy or two would be child's play. That's it! I'm going to that forest! And when I come back with that fantastic power, Morgana will take back everything she said about me not being ready. Let's go, Cheshire. Next stop, Avalon! Ceresa shivered at the thought of what lay ahead, but curiosity got the better of her. Let's go, Cheshire. And so, Ceresa threw caution and her teacher's warnings to the wind and set out towards Avalon Forest. Little did she know that what lay waiting in those dark woods would change her fate forever. Massive trees blocked almost all light from the moon. An eerie silence enveloped Teresa. She cautiously ventured onwards. Teresa, one foot in front of the other. Up 
plant from Inferno. I wonder how it will respond to my magic. Looking into the dark underbrush, Ceresa could not shake the feeling that someone was looking back. As the wind rustled the leaves, it sounded just like a rasping voice whispered in her ear. I can't turn back now. I'm going to become a witch and save Mummy. been a rabbit or something. Right, Cheshire? Is... is someone out there? Teresa could not shake the feeling she was being watched. Is someone there? Show yourself! And then, as if to answer her call... were fairies, nefarious creatures who ensnare the souls of humans who venture into the woods to feed on their vitality. This time there was nowhere to run. Ceresa was backed into a corner. Please, please walk this time. Fingers crossed, Ceresa prepared to use the summoning spell she learnt from Morgana. Even after the summoning circle had faded away, no one had answered her call. Why? 
I did everything right! The fairies resumed their sinister mission. All at once, they jumped at Ceresa. Weapons poised to strike. She shut her eyes tight and prepared for the worst. A moment passed. And then another. But she felt not so much as a pinprick. What? Who are you? Chomp! Ah! That beast, as dark as a moonless night, had it all been a dream? You don't think... could that have been... But before Ceresa could finish her question... From its gaping maw, extending ear to ear, fell a drop of thick slobber. Wait, did I manage to summon a demon that has now possessed Cheshire? As if in reply, the beast growled and bared its blood-red fangs, just as Ceresa feared. A demon had indeed possessed her beloved stuffed cat. The creature had desperately sought a medium in order to survive in our world. In lieu of hair, it settled for one made of felt. Looking around, the demon's eyes found Ceresa. It let out a low growl. After her initial terror, Ceresa realized that she was able to understand what the demon was saying. You... you want me to return you to Inferno? Now, how would one go about doing that? Ceresa had her hands full calling a demon to this world. She hadn't even begun to study the spell to send them back. Ceresa once again heard the demon's words, this time even more clearly. Send me back! Send me back! The demon's rage increased by the second, but there was nothing Ceresa could do. Out of patience, he pounced. Claws like daggers descended on Ceresa. <laughs> But what have we here? The demon had stopped cold. As if bound by an invisible force, no matter how he struggled, he was unable to touch Ceresa. Calm down! You're going to burst the seam! Don't worry, I'll send you home. Once I figure out how... I'm on my way to get a fantastic power! With that, sending you back should be a piece of cake. Giving up his attack, the demon turned his attention elsewhere. Intrigued, but a little scared, Ceresa decided to follow a bit behind. ran through the forest, searching for a way home. Oh, I'm a no 
mood for pests. Get ready for a faceful of claw. The demon left towards the fairies. The demon slashed with his razor-sharp claws, but something felt off. His power seemed to escape him, slowly but surely. What's wrong? Ah! The demon bared his fangs. He was clearly suffering. Are you sick? Or hungry, perhaps? As Cereza approached, the demon felt the strength return to his body. In an instant, he felt right as rain. His body was linked to Cereza by powerful magic. Moving away from her robbed it of its energy. What's that? I need to stay close to you? I've never heard of a spell like this before. How do you plan on getting me back to Inferno? The demon demanded. We first need to find White Wolf. He'll show us the way. Leave it to me, I'll find him, said the demon as he clambered to his feet. Um, I'm Cereza. What's your name? I have no name, replied the demon curtly. You don't have a name? That must be terribly inconvenient. Though I must admit, I haven't the faintest idea about demonic manners. May I call you Cheshire? That's the name of the stuffed cat you decided to borrow after all. Well, I need to call you something. If you're going to make a fuss about it, why don't you just find a new body? Fine! I'll just call you whatever I please. And so these strange companions set off in search of the White Wolf. What mysteries await in Avalon Forest? The demon seemed to have calmed down. 
Remembering that he could not touch her, Ceresa breathed a sigh of relief. The pungent scent tickled Ceresa's nose. It was rosemary, often used to ward off evil spirits. As soon as the scent reached Cheshire, he pulled away, face scrunched up in disgust. It looked like demons could not stand being anywhere near the flower. This was quite a pickle, but Ceresa knew how to get by without a scratch. Cheshire, I've got it tied down! Finish it! Once, Cheshire's body shrunk to its original cuddly form. Cheshire! Ceresa ran to pick up Cheshire and held him tightly to her chest. In her arms, Cheshire felt his strength returning. Release me at once! Even in this form, the demon did not seem happy about being cuddled. Just hold still, will you? While you're small, you can't walk on your own, right? I'll carry you until you can transform again. Not having a massive demon breathing down my neck will make it easier for me to calm down too. 
While far from pleased about being treated like a stuffed animal, the demon had no choice but to swallow his pride. There. See if there's a way forward.
chest. Did the fairies make this? I wonder what's inside. There were signs that a witch had set up camp here. Perhaps I'm not the first witch to enter this forest. <clears throat> oh well, it means we've got a place to rest. Hmm? Look what we have here! Exhausted.
let's take a break. Before them stood a large wolf. Its snow-white fur shone pale silver in the moonlight. Avalon Forest, the white wolf guide you. Ceresa was captivated by the wolf. It seemed almost not of this world. The world before Ceresa seemed to warp and bend. She blinked hard to no avail. Could this be a fairy trick? Cheshire was losing patience with his hesitant companion. Come on! We've still got that wolf to catch! Uh, I'm getting ready. Just give me a second. As soon as she took a step inside, she felt as if the breath had frozen in her chest. All around her were sights strange and terrible, as if she had been dragged into a waking nightmare. I... I'm fine. It takes more than this to scare me. How am I supposed to find my way in here? <gasps> Suddenly, Ceresa's magic brace began to glow. What could it be? The light from the brace revealed things Ceresa was unable to see before. Does this brace have the power to dispel illusions?
there something here? Upon close inspection, there appeared to be distortions, as if the air itself had cracked. Equally confused, the girl and demon exchanged a glance. That wolf was just up ahead. Cheshire's indecision did not last long, but try as he might, he was unable to open the cracks any further. Try using magic to open it? Come on! We have no idea what's lurking on the other side. Cheshire gave a mocking snort at Cerisa's cowardice. I am not making excuses! All right, fine! Okay, Cerisa. Just like you practiced. Once their eyes had adjusted to the brilliant light, what lay before them was a sight unlike anything either had seen before. Cheshire, I have a feeling we're not in Avalon anymore. Yes, my dearest Cerise. I still can't save anyone. <laughs> 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 